Um, thank you for being here with us tonight. We are excited. Um, I know that I was not part of the last meeting officially here in the office, but I did uh, take the name, so I'm excited to be back. Thank you all for joining us, and we appreciate uh, you taking the time to be here with us tonight. We are going to be talking about some uh, really interesting topics, and before we do that, we want to mention a few things in regards to our Blitz Week. Uh, it was definitely a good week. Uh, we can say that overall we only got in a couple of inspections, um, but we also uh, noticed that we have not uh, received all of the updated inspections on FMCSA. So if you did get inspected during that week and you have not sent that inspection in, please make sure you go ahead and send that in right away. Um, just as a quick reminder, you do have uh, to turn those in as soon as you get them, whether you pass or fail, those need to be turned in. And we can actually see those on FMCSA, but it does take some time for FMCSA to update those. So please make sure that you're always sending them to us. Um, on our guidelines, it states that you need to send them right away. Please also make sure that you sign them. Uh, that is important as well. So if you haven't turned your inspections in, please make sure you do so. As of right now, with what we have, uh, we can definitely say that it was a good week. Um, we were probably uh, expecting a lot more movement during that week, but you know, it is what it is. We know that uh, some of you guys decided to stay home, but majority of you guys stayed on the road and were uh, vigilant to where you were doing your uh, inspections before Blitz Week. You were making sure that you were prepared, that you had everything that you needed to have in check before that time came. So we appreciate all of the effort that everyone did during that week. It was definitely um, nice to see that it went smoothly, and definitely that's what we want to see. So um, as far as like, Amanda during that week and say, hey, um, am I good on my hours? Um, I'm confused. I have a question. Can you help me, you know, uh, look at this violation that I'm showing? And she was working with them directly just to make sure that everything was taken care of before it became a problem. And, and she's really picking up uh, yes. some knowledge on that. So Definitely. I see that it's been useful for you guys for sure. So yes, uh, touch base on uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and as you can see on the screen, uh, there's just a couple things uh, that I want to mention. Um, I know that we're getting into the season, into the summer right now, and it's kind of exciting because, uh, you know, we're finally getting out of that slow season. And, and what's going to happen during this season, right? All of y'all might have been asking this. And um, I think that it's important to understand that uh, regardless of how the market is, there is a possibility to thrive during this time. And I'm so excited uh, today to be able to show you guys some of the new reports, some of the new data that we've uh, come out and I'll be able to show you. And, uh, uh, you know, because it's, it's kind of like a testimony to, hey, you know, if I am uh, doing everything I can, uh, what are the pointers, what can I do better? And uh, if not, then obviously if everybody else is not doing well, then well, what's the point, right? Well, the good news for all of you guys is that we do have, uh, actually proportionately, it's a little bit more than half of the fleet that's actually doing uh, pretty good. So uh, with considering uh, uh, the rates that way it's been, uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, the common denominator, which is learning the market, learning the moves, and learning the trends of what to do as a dispatcher, as a self-dispatcher. And it's actually not that hard because a majority of the guys that we have are able to do that. So I hope that uh, I'll be able to shine some light for you guys uh, you know, on this topic. But uh, one of the main things uh, you know, to increase your chances is you have to know what's the latest market movements. And uh, I like uh, the Freight Waves Daily Watch because they give a, a very early morning snap uh, you know, of the whole market, just what's going on overall, and then some markets uh, you know, specifically, uh, which ones are uh, per, uh, you know, doing good and why or bad. So it's very, very important to keep up with that. Um, and that's just a small, uh, you know, fast read. Uh, there's other places you can uh, do this uh, with, Coyote, Debt, uh, YouTube. 
I am okay with YouTube. Uh, you know, um, uh, there's a few different podcasts that I've watched even myself. The only thing that I would caution you uh, be careful is don't be stuck on the only now uh, markets. A lot of the dispatchers or a lot of the YouTubers, they just focus on what's going on on the news or they focus on what's going on in the market today. And as you know, <laughs> the markets go up and down multiple times a day. So it's important to uh, know what's going on today, but you also have to think uh, a step back and look uh, from the big picture. Don't forget the big picture because it matters. It, it, it creates a very different uh, uh, you know, perspective if you look at both, uh, especially with everything that's been going on lately because it's been so drastically changing. So if you're not signed up for Daily Watch, I encourage you to sign up for them. Uh, it's very easy. Just go to Freight Waves and uh, there's a section in there for signing up. Um, yes, but what's to expect? Uh, produce and harvest season is uh, starting. We've seen that uh, you know on the south, uh, 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 southeast corner of U.S. it's starting to boom, uh, which is good news. Uh, pretty much everybody that's been going to South Atlanta, uh, uh, South Carolina, North Florida, that area, it's been uh, you know pretty good coming out. And it's not just reefers; it's actually vans too. Uh, so. Um, yeah, that's a good area to watch for. And then um, uh, local jobs uh, for uh, as the weather, as the rains stop, as we get into June. Uh, and uh, like in Dallas, we're going to have another one or two uh, rainstorms come through. And then after that, we will most likely see uh, some dry. Uh, and uh, when that happens, a lot of construction trucking, uh, you know, local jobs go back in business and that uh, tightens the market for over the road uh, trucking. And then obviously, uh, you know, uh, as we'll look into it, uh, we've seen that truck volumes uh, have dropped uh, recently, uh, which is good for everybody that's here right now. And then load volumes stayed the same, uh, which is good also because that does, those two combinations uh, does create uh, the tightening of the market. Yes, but we'll check into more on the market outlook. And then also uh, there's a lot of updates that uh, PDP came out with that I'm really excited to share with you guys on the dashboard and uh, uh, you know a, a guide uh, that I'm, I've created to show you guys. Uh, and uh, uh, yes, and I hope that it will be helpful. And then there's also an advice uh, on some of the things that uh, I've come to realize that I've been repeating to a lot of the guys uh, and uh, it's been helpful, so I just want to share those two at the end. All right, so uh, without further ado, um, yes, market update. Um, I've sent uh, a update uh, from a uh, first quarter uh, Coyote uh, Logistics. They have a pretty detailed, uh, you know, going into it uh, once a quarter. Um, I'm going to be using that uh, a lot and just kind of my takeaways. Um, yes, but uh, I did send that out earlier, and if you haven't had a chance, definitely look into it. But for those of you that maybe haven't had a chance to understand what all those graphs means, I just want to uh, do a quick rundown. So first, if you look at my screen, uh, this is a very uh, important chart because it shows approximately what the actual cost per mile uh, market uh, is doing. Uh, actual cost per mile, and also uh, how the uh, the spot market performance is. So if you look at it, what's interesting uh, to note is that in 23, uh, it it was dropping, fall dropping, obviously, you know, in 22, and then in 23, it bottomed out. And since then, it's been pretty much uh, holding steady. And as we've been going into 2024, it's been going steady. This is very important. Uh, because obviously, uh, whenever uh, you know you bid on contract or deals or anything on spot market, you want to know what your uh, base con uh, you know uh, the cost is, especially after this whole COVID era when everything was just completely out of whack. But uh, as you can see, the uh, spot mar uh, rate performance is going up, and uh, uh, the cost per mile is staying uh, and holding. 
So, um, yes, because anybody who uh, doesn't do this or doesn't understand this or uh, doesn't uh, calculate what your budget is, this is why I talk about the budget a lot, you know, they do risk to go into bankruptcy. So this is very, very important. And uh, another thing that's important uh, uh, to understand is uh, you have to get your cost under control so that uh, you can operate without uh, having to borrow because it's actually very, very hard to borrow right now uh, with the way the market is. So, yes, yeah, staying in the market is, um, is possible right now with how everything's been going. Um, and then um, on the uh, macroeconomic, uh, this is very, very important. I know that it's, there's a lot of lines and, uh, you know, it's like, gosh, like, uh, how, how do you even make sense of this? Well, let's do one at a time. So this uh, uh, dotted gray line is um, the sales to inventory ratio. It's basically how much American consumer is spending. And as you can see, since 21, 22, since COVID area, it dropped, but it's been steadily going upwards. And even in 23, it looked like it peaked, but then it dropped and it's starting to curve back upward. So in many ways, that's good indicator that, uh, you know, economy uh, is, uh, is basically hanging on. Um, and then uh, the next one is this uh, industrial uh, production. It's this black thick line. And as you can see, uh, after COVID, it all went up, uh, uh, you know, down and then up. And this is basically the total value of physical goods America is producing. So all of those uh, shortages of parts and like, uh, you know, supply and demand and everything, uh, you know, being so tight because of COVID, that's all kind of thawed out. And as you can see, uh, even though it's been slightly, slightly dropping, you know, maybe a little bit dropping in 2013, uh, 2023, but then very steadily, uh, it's, it's, it's basically flatlining. So that's uh, really good news because, uh, uh, you know, it's stabilizing um, and uh, it's not dropping, you know, anymore. So that's good news. And right before it, go, it can go up, it needs to stabilize and find its new floor, basically. Uh, the next one is imports. How much imports is coming in? And that's this uh, light green line. So as you can see, it dropped, went up, and then in 23, it dropped significantly in the beginning of 23, but then it started to go up. And that's actually one of the curves that's going upward, uh, probably the best out of them all. And this is true because, uh, you know, a lot of people said, well, you know, because of China, uh, you know, there was a big uh, uh, worry what's going to happen to the imports because imports uh, uh, create a, a big uh, push uh, for us trucking, uh, you know, anywhere in the port uh, cities like Houston, East Coast, West Coast, and so forth. So it's very, very important that uh, it, it's, it's healthy. Um, yes, and we've seen actually a lot of imports from Mexico coming in into Texas. Uh, it's, uh, I've actually read this report that um, uh, uh, it was just a couple of weeks ago that uh, Dallas is one of the most growing, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to um, uh, staging areas. And that's very, very big because, you know, before you would have a lot of stuff coming in from China. Uh, from the California, uh, but, uh, you know, Texas was just a dead spot. And because of all the businesses coming into Texas, it's actually becoming one of the new, uh, you know, hotspots. Uh, so the, the market is just uh, shifting and changing. And for us as over-the-road trucking, it doesn't matter where we go. It actually makes better sense if it's all separated farther so we can, you know, connect the dots. Um, and then the last one is consumption. It's the dark green. And this is basically a ratio of goods, uh, uh, goods businesses have in stock versus how much they sell. And as you can see, that's also been flatlining. So basically all I'm showing is uh, towards the end of the year, and that's another thing, this data is um, you know, a little bit delayed. It doesn't show us uh, you know, probably three or four month delay. Uh, but we can pretty much uh, project and guess what's going to be happening with this 
uh, as long as if it's flatlining like that. And bottom line, despite continuing headwinds uh, going on in the 2024, the U.S. economy seems to have stubbornly avoided the recession. So, uh, you know, we'll see, uh, obviously, as this uh, uh, comes in, uh, as we go into the second quarter and then uh, the summer, uh, and uh, we'll see how true that is, that statement is, but um, it's very possible. So. Uh, the next one is diesel prices. As you can see, you know, you guys obviously have seen this at the pump. Uh, but uh, yes, it has uh, gone up really, really crazy. And then it dropped really a lot. And now it's creeping up a little bit and a little bit, which uh, my biggest takeaway is at any given point, if you are uh, uh, spending more than 25% of uh, gross to a uh, fuel to gross ratio, then you're basically wasting your money. On the thousand dollar load, you should not spend more than $250, okay? And I just looked again, uh, there's a lot of you guys who actually are all, uh, all the way down at 20% and under. So uh, keep that up. And if you uh, really uh, want to know how, yes, a, a cano economy of the truck is one thing. It also matters where you fuel. It also matters where you use the fuel card because I don't know if you know this, but there's discounts if you use the fuel card at specific tr uh, truck stops. So you have to use that app that, uh, uh, that they give you uh, uh, to find those locations. I would say that TA uh, and uh, Petro, uh, AM Best, uh, Roadies, all of those trucks that they give the best discounts. And then Loves does not give us discount. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's still some guys that do f uh, fuel there, which I understand if you really want to. But, uh, you know, those discounts, they add up quite a bit. So thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, yes, the next thing that uh, is the big takeaway from this report is that uh, the number of uh, trucks uh, being ordered or built uh, uh, has been dropping, uh, and it's because the carriers are buying less trucks, uh, which makes sense, you know, it's been a slowdown, uh, and uh, this is, you know, actually, I've talked to a financing uh, friend who, uh, you know, we kind of check in once in a while, and he's been telling me that uh, it's actually really, really hard to find financing for, uh, you know, small fleets right now. Uh, all because of all the record bankruptcies and so forth in 23 and 24. So uh, definitely uh, props for you guys who are in this uh, and not giving up uh, because right now this is the main thing. Like uh, what, you're, what you have right now, uh, as you get into the summer and next year, the rates and any, uh, you know, the prices for the trucks, they're pretty much uh, gonna be where they are today. Uh, not less. Uh, they're just going to start to increase after that. So uh, anybody that's got in or if you haven't got in, you know, this is literally the best time to get in. But the problem is when you everybody wants to get in because of the prices of the truck, it's really hard to find uh, those uh, prices, uh, those loans, because the banks are not willing to give. So that's, that's the dilemma. That's what I've been warning you guys, uh, you know, from the beginning, uh, from last year and so forth. So uh, the next um, uh, takeaway is, um, you know, when it comes to spot market versus contract market, um, overall, uh, I've noticed that, uh, um, you know, like in 2023, shippers, they used, uh, 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 they used their 2024 um, uh, request uh, for proposal deals, you know, as an, an opportunity to bring their contract rates uh, as low as possible uh, before the pre-pandemic. So because of that, uh, even though the spot rates have already bounced and they started to go up, uh, it looks like that uh, the shippers still tried to get one less round uh, of the price reduction in this first quarter of 2024, which is why you're seeing what you're seeing, uh, you know, what you've seen in the tw uh, first quarter uh, rates. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, a lot of uh, trucking companies, uh, we had a uh, trucking company right here who was parking locally. Uh, uh, they were doing some uh, local uh, trucking and uh, they, uh, they underbid 
uh, their market, uh, they're underbid their contract so low that, uh, they, that he had to go into ba bankruptcy after shortly taking those contract rates. So this is why uh, the spot market is actually going to be much better off staying in the spot market uh, from now until pretty much a couple of years, uh, you know, as it goes up. So, I mean, uh, since all of us are mostly, uh, or all of us are in spot market, that's good news for us. But, uh, you know, in 2024, uh, those uh, uh, requests for proposals that the shippers did, uh, you know, they, uh, they started uh, to settle in and the spot market has finally uh, become more lucrative than the contract market. Uh, you know, we've always seen this in year to, uh, year, to year terms and we'll likely uh, see it in absolute terms very soon. I mean, this is all good news for us uh, in a spot market. Um, as the, you know, as these two uh, markets diverge uh, farther or, well, I mean, the first they're gonna start closer, uh, but then farther and farther because of the spot market, it'll go up much faster. Um, yes, uh, there's gonna be a tension created uh, and the carriers uh, look to move more drivers into the spot market. So we will see this move and shift more and more. Um, this is a map that uh, I wanted to show you guys that basically reflects this. If you can see that, you know, we had that equilibrium that I was talking about. And this is another thing. As you can see, I was talking about equilibrium in, uh, uh, I want to say like October, November, something like that. And it's showing that, uh, yes, it, it's definitely happened. And then uh, we're already like right here with the spot market, uh, but it's all dotted line here because obviously it, uh, this uh, report is delayed by three months. And then look at uh, how the contract rates, it's also going up, but it's gonna take it a lot longer, um, you know, about six months longer uh, just to uh, still going up and it will never actually go up as high as the spot market. So this is what I meant by, you know, with, uh, with how the markets, uh, they react. There's a lot of guys who want to jump into the contract rates and you gotta be very careful with those because, uh, you know, you might be trading uh, safety, you know, because you can uh, do those loads for specific price. But as the market changes, uh, you're gonna be able to find much, much better deals with contract, uh, with uh, spot rates than you would with contract rates. Um, another thing uh, that I wanna mention is that, um, uh, for those of you that's been with me long enough and you've seen this surfer guy, uh, you know, and I've been changing him or his, uh, you know, his uh, position, position, yes, on a wave, uh, and uh, this is the first time that I'm finally making it uh, official that, you know, in the, my, my surfer guy is standing up basically in May and June. And uh, it's a steady, pro it's a slow process. Like this thing doesn't happen overnight. Okay, this is, takes time. But in May or June, uh, you know, this uh, surfer has to stand up. And in the summer, we have to prepare for a, uh, to push hard to maximize the most. Uh, out of the 2024 momentum that we've built. Because all of this, uh, you know, grinding and going through the first quarter and, you know, whatever's been uh, in uh, April and, and, and um, May, okay. it's been a lot of hard work, a lot of momentum building. So all of that, if you keep pushing and keep pushing, you will see in the second half of this uh, 2024, uh, I mean, in the past, I've been able to uh, see the numbers uh, close to double than what you did in uh, the first quarter. I mean, it was certainly true with, uh, you know, uh, post-pandemic, which I don't think it's going to be the same as post-pandemic. Even if we uh, calculate with uh, 2017, uh, you know, market models, if we uh, kind of look and see how that looked, um, it's still very, very uh, positive. Uh, you know, outlook because in again, a uh, spot market in the second quarter of the year, uh, I'm talking about uh, between July until December, you will be able to make uh, much more uh, 
uh, you know, between uh, times and a half, sometimes uh, all the way to double than what you did in the first half of, uh, of this year. So I'm talking about January to June. So, yes. But this is, this is the exciting news because this is finally happening. And I know that I've been kind of beating to this drum already for a while and it's been slow going, but it is true, it's, it's coming. Um, another th uh, couple of things to take away on this uh, specifically forecast is that, um, um, let's see, uh, spot, uh, spot rates uh, will overtake contracts. Um, and they will create pressure for shippers later in the quarter. Uh, a lot of these shippers, they uh, pinched and pushed uh, all the carriers as much as they could, as I mentioned, in the first quarter one last time, you know, uh, to get those prices low as much as possible, which they were successful. But now, uh, for a lot of them, it's going to bite them, uh, you know, back. And uh, depending on uh, where, which areas they are, uh, it's it could be you know even even worse uh, you know but this is uh, this is how the markets work so you knowing this stuff is very important because uh, what the main uh, driver factor uh, when it comes to negotiations with the prices is not just demanding somebody hey you know I need you to give it to me, or crying about it you know <laughs> why don't you give me the better pay <laughs> no I mean, you have to understand that it's all based on supply and demand tug war. So if you are in an area that uh, is definitely in your favor, I mean, you don't have to cry about it. You don't have to demand about it. You know, it's just a matter of you being there in the right timing, in the right location, and you can uh, make the most out of getting that, uh, you know, rate per mile up. But if you're in a bad area, it doesn't matter how much you you know, furiously stand for it, uh, you're just not going to get anywhere. And you're going to be, you know, broken and disappointed and, uh, you know, depressed. Um, yes, but this is very, very important. So, uh, bottom line, uh, you know, this is what even the report says, that while uh, quarter second, uh, uh, Q2 might not feel like a dramatically different operation environment because that's what it is like we don't really feel it you don't think that you're feeling it but the reason why that is is because all of this data is delayed so it takes time for the shippers and the carriers and everybody to kind of get the grasp of things of like okay this is where we are okay uh, but uh, little by little, it's, uh, we're going to see the rates uh, going up as we are already. And uh, uh, we are in changing market uh, that is setting up uh, for a flip later this year. Um, yes, contract rates will take a little longer to recover, but it's okay because we're in a, a spot market. And uh, uh, it might, uh, as you can see, uh, these projections, pro projections we're not uh, expecting anything close to this 2021 uh, <laughs> upward which is okay uh, I actually prefer it that way because uh, if we went up so high look how low we had to go and it was very very harsh but if uh, 2017 look it did went up it's probably gonna go up approximately the same way how uh, you know this time around in 25 but uh, as uh, because it went up this low, uh, you know high, look how low it went, but it didn't go as low as it did uh, this last cycle. So it's actually a good thing for us uh, if it does not go so much, because then we don't have uh, uh, you know crazy people that are just throwing money at trucking and getting in and you know undermining all the business for everybody else. We want it to come in slowly so that it can last longer. Okay, so, um, yes, another thing that I want to show is uh, uh, I'm just going to uh, show you snaps of this uh, dashboard guide that I've created uh, because we've had quite a few guys asking, uh, you know, Peter, how do you, uh, how do you uh, show this stuff uh, with everything that's been going on in trucking? Uh, uh, you know, like I want to see this and, and there's so much that we've built on the dashboard for you guys that you might not know about this 
uh, because there's just so much or you didn't have a chance or during orientations it was so much information that you didn't uh, you know uh, able to grasp it mm -hmm. but uh, basically when you log in there's this uh, in the menu button uh, there's this dash guide and uh, you can click on it and it takes you to this page and um, uh, it basically there's a, temple, a table of contacts you can click on it and, and then it takes you right there and it uh, explains uh, you know primary account collateral account it, it shows you pictures and you know what's to expect uh, a, a little a, a lot of big stuff that we've uh, uh, always had there but uh, nobody really knew about it like for example uh, whenever the um, that header a lot of these headers are clickable so when you click on it it opens up a bigger uh, report so we've created this click me button <laughs> uh, you know to kind of show you um, yes but uh, it just describes uh, a lot of the stuff uh, we've added this history uh, thing I'm not gonna go into every single one of them but the ones that I want to go into is these uh, statistics reports uh, we made some updates on them uh, statistics and weekly reports and um, when you look at these, uh, there's, uh, you know, statistics reports. Uh, this is data. Uh, a lot of it is for you specifically. And then uh, a lot of it is for the fleet. And my biggest hassle was, well, Peter, how do you share the information uh, that can help uh, me, you know, to, um, you know, to choose better loads, to find out what else I can do but uh, without, uh, you know, uh, disclosing the privacy for the owner operators that's been here long and they don't want to be bothered with stuff, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, on what they're doing and stuff like that. So basically it took some effort, but uh, we have it now. It's available now. So, um, yes, I'm just going to go run down uh, through some of them. So first one, which is very popular, this is something that pops up when you just... Uh, uh, log in. you know log in and uh, a lot of people I've noticed that they don't understand what these colors mean so um, there's two things okay very simple it's not uh, it doesn't say what the rates are there okay this basically talks about the price um, the tender capacity index what it is it's a change in the market daily changes in the market uh, and uh, uh, it goes back to one week. So green means that the changes were going towards your favor, uh, meaning that the supply and demand is heading towards your favor, and then uh, uh, the red means it's against your favor. Okay, so the darker the color is, it means that it's been doing it for longer, for up to seven days. The most uh, darkest colors, it means that it's been happening for the last week. And uh, the, the lighter colors, it means that it's been changing, but just recently changed, but mostly just flatlined. So basically what you want to uh, see at, uh, when you look at this is you want to book a load from the dark green ones or any green areas, because in those areas, this is where the loads are, um, um, there's not enough trucks. Uh, and uh, uh, too many loads and if that's happening for too long obviously you have a better chance of you know demanding that bigger price right <laughs> and uh, in the red areas it's the opposite so if uh, for dark red you've had a market where the changes are against your favor uh, I mean it doesn't matter how much you demand but you're not gonna be able to get uh, anybody to agree to any loads uh, usually in those areas the loads just fly off the shelf uh, always under bidding and so forth so uh, the idea is to constantly book loads from uh, uh, dark green or any green area going into red that's very close to the dark green and I talk about all of this in here uh, so yes um, then uh, this graph shows the same data but shows it on a graph, uh, you know, and basically what are the changes in the whole United States. And it's based on the pickup 
right? It's based on the pickup locations. So you've seen that we've had recently, uh, you know, uh, some ups. And as you can see, uh, this map has been getting more and more green. So this is good news. Uh, we did add this fleet rate per mile map recently. And it's basically, uh, as you can see, based on the colors, uh, you know, you got the red, blue, the red, green, blue, and purple. So it starts off with uh, zero or close to zero rate per mile, uh, you know, with gray areas. And then uh, red goes uh, uh, close to be a dollar, dollar fifty. Um, then green goes around two something. Uh, blue goes to three and a half. And then uh, beyond that uh, into purple. And this basically gives you data uh, live. So as the, uh, you know, the ladies in the office, they enter this data, uh, uh, you know, every day. And this goes back to 30 days. So uh, it updates by itself, basically. And you can choose vans, reefers, and open deck. I kind of summed up all the open deck, which those are flatbed, step decks, and RGM. So uh, that helps you to see. And um, yes, uh, I mean, I'm just skipping, but uh, you can read all of this more. There's the history. The reason why we have this history data graphs for you guys is because we want you to see what you're doing in comparison to the fleet. This uh, data is based on IFTA and actual fuel. So you can actually gauge to see, okay, uh-huh, where can I uh, improve? And this is based on, uh, you know, it, it tells you price per gallon, you know, fuel to gross ratio, uh, rate per mile, miles per gallon, all of those things. So uh, yes, have at it. And then this is a similar data as the up, uh, but just showing on the map. Um, this right here is a yearly stats, uh, BTO yearly stats, and it shows basically uh, in comparison what you're doing with the whole fleet. These PR, which is percentile rank. Uh, what it is, is it's measuring, it actually has a definition right here. Um, let's see, the percentile rank of a score, uh, PR, is the percentage of score in its uh, frequency distributed uh, that are less than that uh, score. For example, 90 percentile means that you did better than the 90% of all the BTOs in the statistic, in that statistic. And the highest is 100%. So it gives you a gauge to understand, okay, this is what I'm doing. How am I performing in comparison to the fleet? And since we have, you know, 85 or something, uh, you know, trucks right now, that does give you a good base to kind of compare and see, okay, am I doing this right? Because all of you guys have full control over everything that you do, over your destiny. So how are you doing in comparison to others? Um, okay, so that's that. Uh, loads, you guys seen this load section, it talks about it more. Um, the one that I'm, uh, and there's, uh, I don't know if any of you knew this, but when you click into the loads uh, uh, header, where it says click me and stuff like that, that actually takes you to more details and you can actually download uh, you know, files and you can see uh, more details about the load. All of that's been always available there. Um, yes, okay. so. This new report that I'm really excited is the weekly performance report. So uh, we've had quite a few guys ask, well, uh, Peter, uh, how do I, uh, what, what am I getting? How am I performing weekly? Okay, uh, which is a great question, right? Like we haven't done it per week. We've done it based on past data for the uh, year, the for month. the month. Yes, but not weekly. So now it's actually possible to see weekly. And uh, not only that, uh, this gives you uh, kind of a color code. Uh, it tells you, you know, if you've performed, uh, you know, uh, on a scale of a low week, barely week, good week, or great week. And uh, I'm just very... Uh, you know, very excited and very happy to see that a lot of you guys are actually making really, really good every week. And then it actually shows you, you know, approximately what you're doing on the net, uh, how much you're making on the net after the expenses and so forth uh, in that week. And then uh, I go farther because I want to be able to show you uh, this same data for the whole fleet. 
So this is why we have the best last week and the best two weeks ago uh, section. And it actually shows you without disclosing, you know, uh, all the privacy stuff. These are real data. This is real data. And as you can see, if you'll notice that a lot of it is, uh, you know, changing all the time. But uh, you will, uh, once you look at this, a lot of your... Um, understanding will be shattered because you know we've had a few guys try to fight with me and say no you know in order to make money I have to have a flatbed and if you look at this a lot of times uh, the guys with vans actually make more than the flatbed and then sometimes the flatbed take over sometimes the reefer take over but it doesn't mean that you have in order to succeed you have to have a flatbed or a step deck you can actually make money with any one of them and I've talked about this many, many times. You know, yes, it's a preference thing more than it is, uh, you know, uh, than anything else. It does not uh, uh, make you or break you with, uh, you know, producing money or not. And then uh, uh, it talks about the, uh, the sum, the rate per miles, uh, you know, uh, the pickups, how many pickups, how many drops, uh, how much fuel uh, was spent and uh, you know price per gallon and then it tells you uh, how much uh, that BTO made net income that week and then when you look at um, uh, if you wanna see exactly what lanes uh, those uh, those BTOs did you can click on this eye this blue eye and that actually pops up a uh, you know, or uh, drops down uh, a list of the loads specific loads how they made uh, that amount that, that week. week possible yeah how yes yes with the stops you can see where they're picking up where they're dropping again all without disclosing you know uh, specifically personal privacy information. personal information yes so yes and then uh, that uh, rate per mile map that you've seen uh, uh, this actually is an option uh, that shows a table uh, it's called fleet average uh, rate per mile and it gives you based on the ty trailer type, and you can actually dig in which city they uh, uh, booked the load from, basically, and uh, you know each of those loads and each of those areas, uh, uh, you know how much it was per loaded mile or all uh, rate per mile. Anyway, uh, a lot there's of useful information. Yes, there's a lot of it, and uh, there's a lot more that I'm going to be working on uh, to show you, but. There's a lot of stuff in here that is there for you to, um, you know, uh, make the money and to make the most out of it, to make sure that you're successful. All of these tools, the reason why we've had these tools for you is because we want to make sure that you're succeeding. We want to make sure that you can make money with all of this. So, <clears throat> yes, uh, bottom line, I've spoke to uh, 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 through the most of it. There's a couple last uh, advices that I just want to mention uh, because I've had uh, this help uh, to some of you guys already that I mentioned. But um, uh, this goes back to a strategy that I did, uh, you know, when I was driving quite a lot uh, before, you know, we had this big fleet. And um, some of you uh, guys that's been in this industry for long enough, you know, you might have your own strategy. But uh, if you want to share that, uh, uh, please, um, you know, but uh, I want to share mine. So basically what I did, I chose uh, a, I would look for a good market uh, where the, the map is green all the time, the, the year round preferably. And I would build a customer base, maybe one or two or maybe three customers, uh, shippers or even brokers directly without you know uh, without having to always look at the load board but build a re relationship with that broker so that uh, from that area that's good I always I can just call up or even text and say hey I'm gonna be there on Monday uh, I need a load and I would look for some loads between 800 to 1400 miles so that uh, when I pick that load usually it pays well and usually they never have enough trucks in that area. So they want to wait for me. And uh, I would go and not even spend time on, uh, you know, load boards in that uh, good city. I would book a load from there, deliver that load, 
uh, you know, out, and then I would zigzag backwards. Yes, at this time I'm looking at the load boards and trying to zigzag. Uh, zigzag. I sometimes I've uh, tried to build a customer base uh, with, uh, you know, with the going backhaul, but I've actually never really been able to do it well because uh, because of the market so uh, bad going back. Uh, uh, you know, it's always been, you know, you have a customer and then he falls through or he loses that deal because somebody else on their bid and there's always so much bloodbath in that going back. So I just stop, you know, even wasting my time and I would just use a load board to get back all the time. But this way, uh, what ended up happening, I basically cut my dispatching and my negotiations by half because I always had at least one good load per week and uh, this trip would take me sometimes seven days, sometimes eight days, sometimes, uh, you know, six days if I really wanted to, you know, uh, perfect it and there was no, you know, issues, traffic, all of that. But uh, uh, I would uh, be, I was able to uh, make this trip back and forth. It wasn't exactly a circle. It wasn't a square. It was just going out and then zigzagging back, out and zigzagging back. And that took me basically about a week. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was doing this during hard times, actually. I don't know if you guys know this, but I started uh, PDP trucking in 2006. We went through the whole 2007, 8. And uh, 2008, 2009 is when I actually developed this uh, strategy. And it's what made us uh, go through all the way into 12 and so forth. And then it gotten, you know, much easier after that. But we've gotten so good at it that we've actually started to build some fleet. We have hired drivers, trucks, drivers, and all of that on this route because I had this lane already developed. And I had some good customers that always called me. Uh, and yeah, so I would say that's a great idea. Um, uh, I do want to say also that b based on the market that you choose, if you... Uh, if that season, if that market has a season change at least once or twice a year, you do want to adapt to that. You know, don't just, uh, you know, quit and uh, go into depression. Do something about it and you can succeed. Uh, but always work on a broker, uh, you know, contact from the good area for the most part. I honestly stopped even bothering doing it from the bad areas. But from the good spot, from the good areas, it worked very, very well for me. So, um, let's see. I think that's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so where All we right, are? So we need to. Um, oh, it's seven. Yes, I don't see any questions on the chat. Um, I did answer a couple of them just as they were asking. Um, nothing else um mark and angela they were asking about um the index map if we had anything for flatbed you know step decks i answered that already um and then jesse was asking is there a way to do loads uh, without uh, rate confirmation yes actually that's what i'm literally talking about right now uh doing rate confirmation this spot market freight anything without that you're basically getting into the contract uh freight and I just showed you the map and uh, the graphs that uh, uh, you will always win a lot more. It's much more risky during the downturn to be in a spot market, which we already passed that pretty much. But uh, as we get into the good times, it's actually much, much more beneficial to be in a spot market with the rates, uh, rate cons than you would with the contract. Uh, contract rates, they give you a lot more uh, peace because, hey, you have all of these loads coming in all the time and you just have to uh, do them. The problem is if your truck is broke down or if you just want to take off for, you know, uh, a season, well, you can't because you have this contract and you have to fulfill it or else there's penalties and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I've always, uh, uh, we've done some contract rates and we have some guys that are doing some contracts uh, on and off, uh, but uh, I would strongly advise that, uh, you know, for the long term, uh, especially as we get into the summer and the end of this year, you will benefit and you will make a lot more profit when it comes to spot market than you would uh, with a contract. 
Yeah, uh, Meredith just uh, reminded them that we do need to have something in writing from the customer, for example, an email, you know, from the direct shipper or the direct uh, customer you're hauling from, just saying um, this load is going to be paying this much and we can take that and factor your load with that. So that's just something yeah. important to mention. Um, for the content. Yes, and then uh, Michael Barnes nominated you to get an Oscar for the crying act. <laughs> they are in the meeting, so <laughs> we have a lot of reactions uh, for that. <laughs> okay, well, don't okay. do that. Okay, Th they, it's not gonna work to get better rates. It's just not okay. All right, <laughs> don't so embarrass um, yourself. Come on. <laughs> yes, okay, Amanda, we went over Blitz Week. Um, it was right at the beginning, so we already did that. Um, it's getting late, so we definitely need to do Wheel of Names, but if you do have any questions, we welcome you to give us a call, send us an email, we're always available if you need um, to get maybe some more clarification on anything that we talked about during this meeting. Yes. Okay, so. Yes, we're going to wrap this up yes. because it took a little longer. Um, so, while Peter is doing the Wheel of Names, I do want to remind you that uh, you get three positive points for joining on this meeting today. Um, even if you came in a little late, like Lee, that uh, signed up a little bit late, uh, you still get the three points. So it is important that you always attend the meetings and accumulate those positive points on your BTO report card. We always talk about that, and it's important that you know that it's there, and yes, uh, you get three positive points just for being here tonight. You also get the chance to win $300, and uh, we pick two names during the meeting. So at the end of each meeting, We'll uh, pull up two names, and the only requirement is that you stay in the meeting until the end. And then uh, when we mention your name, that you respond and let us know that you're here. If you um, are not responding, if you just left you know, the computer on or the phone on and you're not actually listening and attending to the meeting, then we will move on and call another name. So. Again, you know, important that you stay until the end and that when, whenever we pull your name, you let us know that you're here. You can send us a message if you um, want or you can just unmute yourself and say, I'm here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. All righty. All right, so we're ready. I got the wheels of name. Uh, we're looking for two winners, right? Okay, and the first winner is... Jake Hughes. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jake. All right, Jake. Are you here? Jake. Jake Hughes. Jake Hughes on one. I don't see yep. him on the He just unmuted. Okay, there right he here. is. Okay. Okay. Jake. Okay, uh, Jake, you unmuted yourself. Can you just let us know that you're here? Okay, he just said I'm here on the chat, so we're good. Okay, perfect. All right, congratulations, Jake. Uh, Ned's name for the 300 $300 coming up. Derek Cathy. Derek Cathy, man. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Derek. Derek, are you here? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Yes, congratulations. All righty. Well, thank you. All righty. So, um, nay. Hold okay. On. All right, so next, uh, we're going to be doing the Most Valuable Owner Operator Award. And just as a reminder, the first place for that gets $1,000. The second place gets 750 And then the third place gets 250 All of this added to your dashboard. So again, you know, this always gets exciting. It's always, you know, um, something that we're looking forward to on the day of the meeting we're watching this closely and then at the time of the meeting that's usually when we pull up the information and disclose who the winners are so we're ready 
<laughs> yes, one more announcement I want to make on this. Uh, I did notice that there's a lot of y'all that still have some excluded uh, DQ files. And you can go to the PDP website to see which uh, they are uh, or call the office. Uh, and that guide, again, that it's going to have more description on this uh, coming up soon. Uh, but yes, uh, I mean, it's a lot of money on the table, guys. I mean, $2,000 every month. I mean, do you really want to make that, you know, pass by you? <laughs> you know, uh, give it a chance. And uh, if you want to know more on how this works, what this means, you know, how this comes up and so forth, I mean, just uh, call the office and talk to us. Uh, because this is a lot of money uh, that's at stake. So without further ado, um, the third place for $250 is... Bradford Quinn. And I see him right here on the screen. Congratulations, Bradford. Congratulations, man. That's third place. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> yes, the best uh, out of uh, the whole fleet. Yes. I mean, yes. All righty. Congratulations. Congratulations again. Okay, so uh, second, second place, place we have... Jason Mir... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to try and pronounce your last name correctly. Jason Mirkovic. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, Mirkovic. Jason. Yes, that's $750, 750. going your way. All All right. And then last but not least... First place. First place. How and much money? it's a thousand dollars. Oh my gosh. It goes to Mario Sims. Congratulations, Mario. Congratulations, Congratulations. Mario. Congratulations. Yes. All of this is available obviously on your dashboard. If you want to see where you stand, uh, you know, percentile wise, uh, you can see everything like this. I mean you can uh, you can uh, plan it, you can uh, it takes uh, some effort to do this, but uh, it's not actually that hard. So it's just a matter of being intentional. Everything in trucking is intentional. You have to be intentional where you drive. You have to be intentional which loads you book, which lanes you book, you know, who you deal with. I mean, logs, everything that you deal with. Why can't it be with, uh, you know, your budget also? Because guess what happens when you intentionally control your finances? You actually make money. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Just saying hi. This is Jimmy. I just got here. I've been over here in Atlanta getting loaded, driving through this uh, this, uh, this food bar area over here. So I guess I missed out. Do I get credit at least for, for coming in? <laughs> Yes, we'll talk to you more about how all of this works, uh, um, you know, off because we're literally just closing off right now. <laughs> yes, but uh, <laughs> yeah, all right. yes, but you missed out, and we're gonna have this on the video for YouTube actually, so you can watch back all of this. In fact, uh, the next BTO meeting is also gonna be a Monday, and I'm just waiting for that date to come uh, to be given mm. to me in a minute. Um, Yes, but uh, uh, tune in for this video uh, because it's a lot of information. Uh, we will go, uh, we do this every month. So, guys, this is a lot of money that's at stake. Yes, okay. and the next June meeting 24th. is the, June 24th, Monday, June 24th at 6 p.m. I mean, we're pretty much giving away, what is that, $2,600 every, every month during this meeting. Yes, mm -hmm. so it... I mean, how much do you want that money, basically? It's up to you. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, thank you guys uh, for being with us uh, for the whole hour. We bless you. Be safe out there. Drive safe. If you have any questions about anything that we spoke of, uh, call me or email me directly. Uh, yes. Uh, God bless you guys. Be safe out there.